Hey dearies, June here, back with another video. I'm currently in a hodgepodge of a schedule when it comes to posting videos, but I'm trying to whip one out every month. I guess it's in part due to the fact that I'm not really sure what sort of content I like to make more. The simple time lapses or videos like this one where I talk. Specifically, today I'll be talking about the story of Through the Rabbit Hole. I'll begin by quickly telling you about February and the art challenge. February was founded in 2019 by Chris Illustration on Instagram and I've been invited to participate during both years and both times I participated in full. This year's prompt, unlike last year, was more open to interpretation, only citing uh, roles of a character within their respective fairy tale or fable. This year, I decided I would tackle a story inspired by a classic fairy tale by Lewis Carroll. Stories, I should say, about one named Alice. Through the Rabbit Hole is a story I created so many years ago, probably around the time of my second year in university. I was cooped up in the library of my school, trying to drown out my depression, which at the time didn't have a label just yet. By writing stories upon stories of fantastical dreams, I was able to get away from my reality. And so what better story to be inspired by, but none other than a story of a girl dreaming of a world far more fantastical than hers. And the story of TRH started off like any other story inspired by Alice in Wonderland. About a girl wearing the classic blue dress and striped leggings, found in every other adaptation since after Disney's version of Alice. Through time, as per any other story writing tales go, the story grew and changed, taking form and life of its own, separate from the inspiration it was based on. For a long time, it was a standalone story which followed the course of events similar to the original, and I never really felt like I was really creating my own story. It was more like an elaborate fanfiction that had yet been worth much. I was drawing my Alice and calling her Alice. At one point, I finally renamed her and called her Sayuri. And during this point, the title had become My Alice Sayuri. And I was getting to a certain a point where I was sure Alice was a group of people rather than one sole person and it was during this time as well when I first came up with the idea of Alice Stones. Partly courtesy of a manga called Gakou and Alice by Higuchi Tachibana Sensei and partly because I had this image of Wonderland filled with bright blue flowers and shiny gems. And I needed a reason for their existence. And because Alice's now have these gems as hearts, seeds, or whatever I will call them in the future, that bloom flowers, I needed a reason as to why they were special. I already knew I was writing a story about magic and that magic originating from Wonderland, but being me, I needed some sort of logic to base my fantasies on. I needed reasons and things that connected so that the basis of the story, whatever it may be, would have been as solid as I could possibly make it. Alice or Sayuri became some other name, and then finally, I landed on Asha. In between this progress, 
I came to weave the story of Asha with that of a story quite close to my heart called Majimodu, a story about a traveling circus which began with a random string of text messages to a close friend of mine some 10 or so years ago about a chocolatier ringleader. I was in my junior or senior year of high school at the time and I would message my friend these short stories about characters and how they came to be, things of that nature. And the chocolatier ringleader was one of the few characters I grew attached to. Now, Majimodu's original premise is that it is a magical circus with the sole purpose of bringing together people from around the world who find themselves a little more magical than the rest of the world. The thing is, the problem with Meiji Maldu is there is no other purpose to it. There was no actual plot. Unluckily for me, as I developed pieces of Through the Rabbit Hole, I also came to learn that the plot had disappeared. And so, both projects were shelved. Asha never came to see the light of day, and my designs for her initially, which I had finalized back in 2017, were lost to the black hole of zeros and ones of a broken hard drive, an event that happened to me in August or so of last year. You'll know all about that with my Instagram post and I also did a blog post about it because it totally wiped at the same time my website had been wiped out so I was just very unlucky and considering how 2020 has begun it just continues on <laughs> the unluckiness I mean anyway I knew that she was a person of color Asha and that the reason was for it was simply because in the universe of Meiji Mordu I touch on cultures from around the world for example my chocolatier is a Spanish boy born in the 18th century my main character is an American Italian born in the 21st century her sidekick is an Asian German born in the 19th century. Arguably, my Asian American character is a main character of her own story. You'll know her as Rosamund Snow from the 2018 Magic Moon Week videos. I'll have the link to the first video up on a card. Boop! There! And also, American-Italian Lira Apolina's parents are part French and Spanish. Well, at least from her mother's side. Other Majimo Du characters hail from uh, these from the top of my head. Africa, Mexico, Romania, Germany, Russia. I may have a Brazilian in there, probably a Brazilian god and even a character hailing from mythologies from Greece and Norway. I wanted the story to be diverse and so I created a diverse cast and seeing as Asha could become friends with Nira, I thought wouldn't it be nice if she too were influenced by this want of mine. Though I do think when I finally take up this project of Through the Rabbit Hole, I will most likely give reason or better cover of history as to why she is a person of color and not so cookie cutter from the original. Still, that's a long way from now and as far as the story is concerned, there's still the matter of the plot needing, well, a plot. <laughs> After all. I like to give some justice in my attempt to be influenced by a wonderful classic and on top of that, events from history like the War of Roses, which 
the original was also inspired by. If you are a patron, you'll know that I talked about the wars that occurred and will occur in the story, which will play a big part in Asha's birth and also how the story begins. I've got the backstory easy, but I just can't find a reason for why Asha ends up going to Wonderland and joining in on a war that she has no business being in, especially being 16 years old. For now, I'm glad to have tackled the story I wish I was writing already, a story of a girl, her brother, a woman who openly despises her master, a master who is delusional and in love with his guard, and of a girl aching to rise from rags to riches. From right to left, if you were looking upside down in the spirit of Alice in Wonderland, in their respective roles based on the prompt of February in the original story, lover of the protagonist, the Mad Hatter, magical creature, the Knave, sidekick, White Rabbit, protagonist, Alice, and the antagonist, the Queen of Hearts. I hope you enjoyed this elaborate rant about a story that has yet to be and also enjoyed watching me draw characters I mulled over in a corner somewhere of my university library while I chugged down Starbucks. When once upon a time, I was addicted to coffee. <laughs> like, two cups every hour or so maybe maybe i'll come to lay stories of my life through my videos more tell me if that's something you guys enjoyed anyway i really enjoyed February, and i was glad to draw my characters out it was a lot of fun and i hope to do this again drawing fairy tales and whatnots and talking about passions in my writing until next time, thank you for watching and listening to me rant. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for my next video. I am working on locking down a schedule like before and producing more as I go along. Bye!